Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself RC. Today we're going to have a look at the JG Aurora A3 3D printer. Now this is a self-assembly printer, so what we're going to do, we're going to build it up, give it a good test and um, let's see how it goes. Are you ready? Let's go. So then, all I've done so far is take it out of its cardboard box. It comes enclosed with um, this foam upper and lower body. You do get a little sticker, I presume that's what it is, to go on the metal frame once you've completed building it. And what I'm going to be doing is, I'll show you what parts are with it, and then I'll probably do a time-lapse build, and if I come across any tricky bits, or bits that I want to go further in depth with, I'll, um, I'll jump to normal time, if you would. So, taking the main thing off, this, by the looks, is a textured powder coated full metal bodied frame. Um, I'm just looking around at this side now, you've got a main on and off button that I can see so far, but other than that, nothing much else in. So we'll lift it out if we can. It's quite tricky actually. I'll see if we can stand it up and move it out. This is where everything falls out, no doubt, but we'll see. There we go. Oh, right, that's not so bad. So what have we got? Got a USB cable with it. You've got a tiny, tiny bit of PLA, I presume, or ABS. You don't know what that is at the moment. Um, by the looks, that's a spool holder. You've got a, a rogue 3D printed part there. Looks like it might fit a stepper motor. Not sure on that. There's another one there. That might be, uh, looks like a bearing maybe for a belt. And that's about it on this that I can see. So let's have more sponge. Just a bit of sponge, nothing else in there. Um, there's a few things, I'll tip this up so you can see it. Up here you've got what looks like you got your main extruder. That's all metal as well by the looks of it. So your stepper motor, extruder, a single extruder on this. Cooling fan, so we'll have a look at that in more detail in a bit. Got your limit switches. Oh, by the looks like they've got pre-soldered uh, plugs on, so they might not need to do any soldering, which will be great. Um, that's obviously a non-UK plug that it's been sent with, but this is a demo model. So it might be a case that there's either another power supply somewhere else, or I'll just have to know, use a normal cattle lead for that. So we'll bin that for now. It's no good for me. Um, got some more parts here. That looks like a, an X carriage. Oh, you've got some little, little nice bearings. Some threaded bar. I, uh, uh, I don't know if that's hardened steel, but that's sort of a, your rods. USB pen with SD. Now I think I'm going to look at that first because going off other things I've seen off on YouTube is this can actually actually contains the build instructions on it. So I'm going to look at those first after I've unpacked this for you. Don't know what's in there, maybe a bearing. A little rubber grommet by the looks. For wiring, there's another one of those. I think it's a roller. For the belt that maybe. Uh, some more bits. Some Allen keys. Lots of little Allen keys, little spanner. Nice aluminium machine block of some sort. Some more. I assume that's for the um, the Y axis forward and backwards. Another motor housing. Another aluminium machine block. A few more bits. Tie wraps. Another plastic plate with a few countersunk hole drilled in. Um, you've got a couple of bearings already installed in these. I assume they're your, your Z axis, up and down. Oh, some springs, better be careful I don't lose them. Loads of little springs and washers and bearings and things in there. A couple more bearings, long and short. And that's it on that one. Okay. And then we've got, we've got a nice hot plate here by the looks of it. And I'd say that's aluminium hot plate as well. 
So I assume that'll be the top. We'll have to have a look at that. There's a few holes in that, so I'm not sure whether you print directly onto that or onto that, or whether it's, I don't know. We'll have to have a look at that, see what the instructions say. And underneath that, you've got even more stuff. You've got loads of stuff in this, haven't you? Um, couple of, I assume the no nozzle cleaners. More screws. More screws, more nuts. Got a nice little cooling fan there uh, for when you're printing PLA and stuff. More wiring cables. There are your belts. Now, I assume that might be for your hot plate, but that hasn't got any ends on that, so it might, you might need to do some soldering on this, I don't know yet. That looks like electronics, LCD. That's your board. It's probably just a ramped board, I'll have to have a look at that in more detail, so we can have a look. And you've got some, oh you've got some cable ties there, well not cable ties, it's uh, to go around the cables, cable tidy, we'll call that. In here, we've got a couple of motors. There you go, two motors, and that's it. I seem to be missing some motors by the looks of it. I don't know where, I don't know where they are. I assume you've got two motors for your Z access. I would have presumed you would have two more. Anyway, I'll have to have a look through just to see if I am missing some parts and if I'm not, then maybe I've not unpacked it correctly. There might be some parts inside here. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go um, to my PC, I'm going to watch the instructions um, and see if I can build it all up. Probably going to take maybe, I don't know, four or five hours. I'll let you know. Anyway, talk to you soon. So I've took the sides off the mainframe and I've also found the power supply unit and the two missing stepper motors. So we're all good to go. I've um, installed the SD card and it's going to talk me through the first assembly by the looks of it. Well, there you go, the JG Aurora A3. Took about five hours to build, and a further one to two hours really to get it dialed in to do half decent prints. The actual bed size is 200 by 200, and it's a heated bed. It'll go up to 110 degrees Celsius. It's got a single nozzle extruder, and that'll do up to about 250 degrees Celsius. It's also got a really good PLA cooling fan on it as well and you can actually link that to the software so you can turn it on and off depending whether you're printing ABS, PLA or whatever. Now it also says it'll do wood I believe. Uh, it's compatible with your open source softwares and also your freely available Cura and Repertar host. The assembly instructions for it weren't bad. Um, I'd certainly recommend checking out everything on the SD card especially the PDFs. Now the PDFs are newer than the video I found the, view, the video to be out of date and also missing um, a complete assembly of the X axis um, and the carriage. So yeah, definitely check out the PDFs. So the good points, extremely well packaged when it came. Um, there was no marks on it. Everything was on its own, in its own little bag, all tagged up. It was really good. Um, so yeah, big plus for that. I like the way it's got a enclosed PSU so you can't get your fingers to it. Um, I know with the, some of the cheaper printers they leave the, the power supply user exposed at the back and um, it wouldn't take much really to get an electric shock off that because you have got bare cable at the back there. So yeah big plus for that. I do like some of these aluminium parts, uh, high quality machine parts on there. Uh, what else have we got? I've mentioned the open source software already and I like the way that because it's open source, you've got the ability to do some modifications on it. 
which really brings me to the, the bad points. So I mentioned um, the poor video. So they really need to update the video at the moment. Um, but yeah, do look at the PDF, that helps. The X carriage. Well, I'll show you what the X carriage was like when I first got it. You can see here the amount of play on it is it's just not really acceptable. Now the reason for that is the bearings are too small for the housing. So the way I fix that, little modification, just put a couple of zip ties around the bearings and then bolt it back together and that completely gets rid of um, any play in the X-axis. The other thing I didn't like about it is the X-axis belt. Now it took me a while to get it tensioned right and the reason why is it's got no tensioner on it. You can't adjust the tension on this belt. Um, of course you can print out a mod which is something I may do in the future but as it is it's not too bad at the moment um, but I, I would recommend looking at that in the future um, the biggest problem I had was the the wobble on the frame now as you can see from this video um, the amount of wobble on the frame and the actual bed staying still is, is not acceptable again um, I don't know how whether it's just my model or the way I probably put it together um, but it's, it's suffering from serious wobble so to get around this I've had to print new feet for it so I've printed new feet on the Z motors so it stands on them and also from the picture that you can see I've installed some at the back and that's really reduced the wobble quite a lot to the point where you're getting some really decent prints now um, I've also added the filament holder and I've added um, some LED, LED lights, just basically so it, you can see what you're printing, you don't have to turn the big light on. Also, you know when it's turned on or not. Um, dead easy mod to do, all I've done is wired it straight into the, um, the 12 volt output terminals of the power supply unit. You'll notice you've probably got a couple spare on that. I've also added some thumb screws down here, because I didn't like the, um, the wing nuts. So... That's not a bad idea to do. Now all these STL files for all these parts I've done, you can get down below. I've actually uploaded them to Thingiverse. So you can um, print those yourselves. Um, I probably do intend doing a couple more mods. One, I want to do a self-leveling um, bed or printing head, which basically involves having a little servo arm that drops down with a micro switch and it points to certain positions on the bed so then when it's printing, it'll slightly adjust the height of the Z axis to get a nice, even um, first layer down. So, it's actually printing not bad at all at the moment. Um, I'll show you some of the things I've printed. We'll start off with the, the 3D Benchy. Um, this printed not bad at all, to be honest. This was uh, before I even played with the retraction um, values. So as you can see, that's come out pretty good. Um, then after the benchy, I did the frog. And as you can see from the frog, that's not turned out so bad. And then I moved on to the lizard. Um, and you can see from the lizard, uh, it's got a lot of retraction to do on this with all the holes. It's completely hollow inside. And it, it did very well on this. Really, really surprised. Um, it's a 0.2 millimeter layer. So uh, yeah, really good. So, would I recommend this? It's um, available mostly from Amazon, I believe, all over the world. And in the UK, it's about £300 at the moment. Without the modifications that I've done, I probably wouldn't recommend it, no. But with the modifications, and the modifications that are printed on this machine, um, yeah, I probably would. It's uh, The prints that it's done, really good. Um, but if you are building one, check out your X carriage for play. And also check that you're not suffering from major wobble um, when you're moving the actual machine at the top. It got to the point where you couldn't even press the button um, and it was lifting and lowering the, the bed nozzle. But since I've added the feet, it's, uh, it's improved it 110%. Well, that's about it. The JG Aurora A3. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please subscribe down below. There'll be a few more to come, no doubt. And, uh, well... Take care.